Let's start the webinar. For this session, we have J.Y. Tan, Head of Research, and Lucas Sim, Analyst from Philip Capital Malaysia, to cover how Malaysia can outperform the broader market by focusing on thematic ideas and explore where the opportunities lie. Let's welcome them. Hi, Roshan. Uh, thanks for the introduction. Um, can I just do a quick check uh, if you can see my screen clearly? Yep, your scene can be seen. Uh, your okay. Screen can be seen. Yeah. Um, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, and let me start by wishing uh, our Philip Capital investors a Happy New Year 2024. Uh, hope all has been well. Um, it's been a while. Um, since uh, we actually dove in into the, uh, for those actually dove into the previous uh, strategy outlook. Um, so uh, JY here and together with us is actually our tech analyst, uh, Lucas. Um, as usual, um, this is a, a quick summary of what we are planning to run through um, for the Malaysian marketing, marketing strategy. Uh, we will do a very quick uh, market recap, uh, our outlook, uh, where we see the opportunity and how do we position for the year as well as uh, our topics. Um, I think as we enter into the to the new year, uh, I would say that it seems like things are falling into places. Um, economy, market uh, should actually turn out better this year. Uh, sentiment has been good so far uh, for the market as as um, as the investors might, might, might realize as we move into the, uh, uh, the mid of the January. I, I think that last year, um, as everyone knows, hasn't been easy, um, especially in the first half, uh, whereby the market was actually a uh, face of volatility in terms of the rising global interest rate. Um, also, the China recovery that everyone was expecting um, was uh, delayed. And of course, um, the, the, domestic, the domestic political landscape, uh, both at the federal as well as the state level, um, um as as you as you might um be aware, um uh, markets slightly got them better only after the conclusion of the state election last year. Um so to set the tone, um we will first uh, again uh, do some market recap. I think if you look at last year, uh US tech, especially uh NASDAQ, um has has performed remarkably well last year uh due to the excitement over the AI, uh, NVIDIA and the likes. Uh, Japan um, closed the year um, um, close to a 30% uh, mark um, as they actually attract uh, tons of foreign investors flow on the stronger, stronger corporate earnings uh, economy, also showing sign of recovery. As we move down the list, um, Taiwan, Korea, in, uh, India is also the market uh, that has done well. Um, but if you were to look at the Malaysian market highlighted both in the uh, red color box, um, KLCI was down close to about 3% uh, to close the year. Um, but on the flip side, the small cap has done well, uh, up by about 10%. Um, so, so I think all in all, um, Malaysia con overall continue to underperform uh, the, 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 regional, uh, the regional guys. Uh, if we were to break it down between uh, the sector as well as the FBM, KLCI components, uh, last year construction property has, has done well on, on, on the renewed Johor uh, team. Uh, in fact, um, uh, most, of the, most of the sectors uh, will, will actually uh, um, show some lackluster performance. I think in terms of the big cap KLCI, in line with the KLCI decline, um, I think most are actually in negative territory. I think that YTL Power, YTL Corp, uh, which was only included in November last year review, uh, were actually the biggest uh, gainer. Uh, no surprises in terms of Ringgit. Um, I think for those of us that frequently travel out of Malaysia, uh, we will actually uh, feel the pain um, considering that uh, Ringgit was actually down close close to about four five percent last year, uh, just slightly better compared to the Japanese yen. Um, but but I think I think since you no know, we are on this page, uh, I would say that um uh, being the 
worst performing um, currency last year, we are expecting um, the currency strength to actually uh, uh, play play out this year and 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 um, and positive on the local market. Um, I think in terms of the interest rate differential, um, as 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 you guys know, uh, the U.S. Fed is looking at about seventy five basis point cut, uh, this year. Uh, with the OPR expecting to maintain at the three percent level, so I think that um, if 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 this happens, um, which we which we believe will start materializing in the second half, we should expect to see the current interest rate differential <clears throat> to actually narrow, uh, on on the expectation of the Fed fund rates cut, and 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 this will also in turn drive a stronger, uh, ringgit. Um, yeah, so so basically we are expecting ringgit to strengthen towards the 440, 450 level. Uh, this is basically just uh, another recap. Uh, some of the key indicators that we track, uh, oil price is now below the $80 per barrel, uh, but we continue to see upside from current level, which I will bring you guys into, the, into further details later. Uh, OPR, like mentioned, 3%. Uh, uh, and, and of course the ringgit strength, uh, which will eventually play out this year, um, based on our forecast. So this page, uh, this page uh, show the foreign equity fund flow of the Asia six market as well as Malaysia. Uh, if you follow, if you focus on the column third from the right, um, and the one highlighted in blue, uh, Asia six has uh, attracted close to about thirty two billion of uh, US dollar of net inflow, with the uh, biggest uh, capital flow moving into India and Korea. And you recall, um, uh, those two regions are also among the better performing, better performing regions. Uh, Thailand, Thailand closed the year uh, with uh, close to about five and a half billion of uh, outflow, uh, one of the uh, worst uh, performing market in Southeast Asia uh, due to the political uncertainty. And of course, closer back home, uh, we saw about 2.3 billion of uh, outflow. Um, I would say that again, nothing new, uh, nothing worth being surprised. Uh, I think over the past 10 years, as you can see on the on on, on the bottom right hand um, graph, you can see that we effectively have seven years of outflow, uh, which is also probably one of the reason why CR has been constantly underperforming the market. I think that at the end of the day, uh, ringgit as well as our earnings, uh, corporate earnings actually play a, a very key role here. Uh, so we what we actually mean by this is that historically, ringgit and our market actually show a positive correlation and, and ultimately ringgit strength should actually result in a better market performance. Um, and, and, and the reason is that if you look across our CI components, um, is largely dominated by the old economy business. Um, and, and hence uh, market earnings are, are, are quite, po quite positively correlated to the corporate earnings. So, so what we are saying is that both need to be a lot stronger, uh, both currency as well as earnings to actually see the market uh, slowly uh, re-rate upwards. Um, if you look at the December foreign shareholdings, um, again, hovering close towards its uh, all-time low, 90.5%, I, I think that with this, um, the, downside, the market downside risk will likely be kept. And, and, and again, if things fall into the right place, uh, we will gradually see uh, fund flow actually moving out from the developed market and, and back in towards the emerging market. Um, so um, if, if you look at the, the two charts above, uh, S&P as well as NASDAQ, I think um, as you can see, I would say that valuation is uh, by, no, by no means cheap. Um, both S&P and NASDAQ, has come up from its peak uh, since the strong rally last year. Uh, but even with the recent cor uh, correction, I think both are still trading uh, close towards its uh, historical mean. Um, and we all know that what's driving US market has always been the handful of tech stocks. Uh, and knowing that valuation is not at um, at a attractive level, um, so what are the expected what are the expectations of the US market uh, this year? Um, we, we also know that uh, November will be the US election. Um, as you can see at the bottom graph, 
um, based on our our trend analysis uh, over the past six um, election, regardless of uh, whether Republicans or you know Democrats um, actually win the election, uh, the U.S. market uh, tend to um, return positive uh, in the twelve months leading up to the election, and 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 this is positive for the local market um, because generally. Uh, we all know that when U.S. sneeze, uh, Malaysian market tends to catch a cold as well. Uh, so in that sense, we are expecting a lesser market volatility uh, being influenced by the U.S. market. Um, and I think historically, what we want to highlight here is the small cap index, um, as you can see, the FBM uh, 70 uh, small caps. Um, constantly outperformed the KLCI due to the cheaper valuation. I think earnings profile has been a lot, a lot stronger than the large cap as well. Um, that's why I think that over the past ten years, you can see that small cap actually returned, uh, positively, um, six out of the ten years, whereas um KLCI only returned uh two out of the ten. I think that generally. Um, investors would be a bit more, uh, uh, would get a bit more, uh, exposure in the more attractive uh, sector within the small big cap space, as I, uh, mentioned earlier that, uh, CI tends to only be dominated by the uh so called old uh economy. Um, so moving to twenty twenty four, uh, this is how uh we like to position the market as well. Um, I think overall, uh, as you can see, last year, um, KLCI um, was actually down by close to about 3% um, versus uh, small cap 10%. Um, and, 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 and this actually support our view that we see better opportunity in the small mid cap space uh, to generate the highest alpha. I think earnings uh, growth uh, is also looking stronger. I think close to about 500 basis point if you were to compare between the small cap as well as the um, CI. Um, I think admittedly, um, everyone is um, saying that market, market valuation is cheap. Um, I think that with consensus expecting close to 10% KLCI EPS growth for 2024, and trading at about uh, 14 times forward PE, market is uh, definitely looking uh, inexpensive. Um, but what we think is that uh, cheap can also stay uh, inexpensive for a period of time. Um, as you can see on the top chart, the market has been trading at minus one standard deviation. Um, it's a uh, 10 year mean since uh, the end of 2021. Um, and various factors uh, for this underperformance. Um, uh, ESG, for example, uh, that has been affecting the plantation sector, for instance. And, and, and the fact that, you know, um, just want to continue to reiterate, uh, KLCI are just you not know, largely dominated by the traditional economy, which may not be appealing for the, for the new gen uh, investors. Um, but, but again, uh, uh, don't get me wrong here. I'm not trying to start the year on, on a very negative tone. I think that what we are saying is that we are positive uh, on the local market overall, uh, but we much prefer to have our foot deep, uh, deeper into the uh, small mid cap space. Um, so the, the, the changes that we have made uh, since uh, speaking to our fellow investors uh, the last round is that um, we ha definitely have more buy calls, uh, within our universe, um, and 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 uh, presenting to you our sector positioning, um, for twenty twenty four, um. So we have identified a few teams, uh, that we like. Uh, some of them have some uh, very strong structural growth teams. Um, we are now overweight on five key sec uh five key sectors. Um, we have the construction, the EMS, the healthcare the oil and gas, as well as uh, the technology. And the only sector that we are neutral on is basically uh, property. So out of, um, out of the respective uh, sector exposure, uh, so below is actually our top 10 buys. 
um, high conviction buys um, arranged by the upside. I think for 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 investors that 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 would like to know, you know, whether our topics are Sharia or non Sharia, uh, I think that only one uh, company out of our top ten buys are are are, are in the non Sharia uh, uh, space. Um, so I I'll be bringing uh you guys um into the respective uh five sectors, um and I will have uh I will, I will then bring my um uh, our technology our tech analysts um to actually share with you his view on the sector for twenty twenty four as well. Um, so the first one is construction. Um, I think I think that last year this year the thesis remained unchanged. Um, we expect news flow for this sector to actually pick up uh, uh, with the high, uh, few highly anticipated projects, lah, the likes of your MRT3, Penang LRT. And of course, uh, just to reiterate, you know, for, for some of you um, that, that we have missed the budget and our previous uh, strategy outlook, um, the higher DE spending uh, announced by the local government in the uh, Trump Malaysia plan, uh, medium review is also positive, and I think that uh, um, um, one of the one of the two biggest benef beneficiary, uh, that we actually like, with a very strong um infra track record is uh basically uh Gamuda uh, and Suncon. Um, the, the 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 second the 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 likely second um space that that will that will um be interesting for the investors is of course on the growing data center investment. Um, as as you guys know, um, there has been some new IPO, uh, within the construction space, um, that 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 there is also uh has have ex have exposure in the data space, uh, data center space, um, the likes of your upcoming uh HE group, critical, so on and so forth. Um, and I think that I think that um there will be more and more uh construction companies uh that will be uh growing uh more aggressively uh in the data center uh, space. So I think that I think that sim uh, similarly um Gamuda Suncon, for example, um, is expected to benefit from the growing investment within this space, la. and and that is also one of the reason why, um, state such as uh, Johor has been uh, in increasingly attractive, and 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 the good thing is that uh, data centers uh, usually have a shorter turnaround as well as a, a slightly better margins, uh. um, so uh, for 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 sector exposure, um, like mentioned, uh, Gamuda Suncon. Um, I think I think in terms of the in terms of some some of you may ask in terms of the Penang as well as the Johor team. I think that for the for the Johor for for the for the Penang team, our topic is actually uh Kajaya. I think uh, if you look at Kajaya, they has been uh, they have been benefiting a lot from the contract flow from E and O. Um, who is actually in the midst of developing the Reclaim Island. Uh, with an estimated GD, uh, GDP of about 20 billion over the next uh, 15 years. Um, uh, Gamuda, uh, which, which I mentioned, uh, Gamuda and Kajai is actually uh, our two uh, topics uh, in the sector. Um, but um, within the space, we also have a buy on, on EME Elite. So EME Elite uh, will leverage on the Johor team um, they are specialized in the industrial park development uh, and, and we see them as a good exposure to actually benefit from the influx of FDIs from, from the, uh, as, as well as from the Johor Singapore uh, Special Economic Zone. Um, um, and, 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 and ultimately, uh, we have three buy in this space, Gamuda, Kajaya, as well as uh, EME. Uh, moving on to next um, is the EMS space. Um, uh, as you all know, uh, EMS space is uh, largely on the trade um, tension team um, that, that actually saw and continue to see Malaysia uh, actually benefiting very strongly from this um, as the global MNC actually uproot their supply chain um, and shift their manufacturing operation 
um, towards the Southeast Asia region um, and benefiting uh, Malaysia. I think that the benefit that we have uh, over the developed market is the fact that uh, government policy, um, you know, um, wages tends to be you know, more, 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 more uh, attractive. Uh, the ecosystem in Penang uh, uh, continues to be continue to uh, to be very established and, and and making it enticing the MNCs to actually set up shops uh, in, in Penang um, and making us a, a very strategic location uh, in terms of the shipping shipping route as well. Um, but but nothing nothing much has changed. I think that in this space we continue to like the industrial players uh, over the consumer names. Um, I think that the industrial players are well positioned in the circular trends. Um, your AI data centers, which I mentioned, uh, your 5G space. Lah. Um, and as compared to the consumer, we think that the global end demand um, is still relatively uh, quite uncertain um, um, at, at this point in time. So, so for sector exposure, um, we like uh, Nation Gate. Um, again, a uh, prime beneficiary of the trade diversion. Um, and then, uh, the, they, are, they are also um, getting a lot of uh, inquiries um, to, to, um, from potential new customers to actually move the, uh, their operation from China over to Malaysia. And, and, and they, they are also on a very aggressive um, ex uh, floor space expansion mode, lah, uh, growing by close to about 50% last year. Um, so I think uh, from uh, from this year on uh, from this year onwards, uh, as you can see, uh, we are expecting a very strong uh, EPS growth, uh, more than hundred percent. I think that this will be driven by the recovery from the five uh, G five G segment, um, and 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 we will also gradually see uh, a, a ramp up in terms of their data uh, center uh, 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 customers. And 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 all this all this coupled with the fact that um floor space is expanding very aggressively should actually support our EPS growth assumption. So we, we have a buy on our nation gate. Uh, uh we have a target price of one eighty. Um, moving on is to Cape. Um, Cape is uh, another name which we like. Um, similar story to the uh to nation gate as well. Uh, we we believe that overall. Uh, the EV the EV segment will see a very uh, significant growth this year, uh, uh, growing to about thirty percent of their of their of their revenue. Um, I think most recently, um, they also, uh, soon to be soon to complete their acquisition of uh, Icon, uh, uh, um, for with which actually come with a three years profit guarantee. Um, and 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 all these reasons, you know, capacity expansion, higher volume, a uh, higher customer volume growth, um, uh, is expected to drive uh, an equally strong uh, EPS growth uh, of about fifty seven percent, um, in twenty twenty four, and 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 the thing the thing that differs uh between Cape and Nation Gate, is that Cape is actually trading at a much more uh, attractive valuation. Compared to compared to the rest of the peers, uh, which is trading at about seventeen to about twenty times, uh, um, and 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 uh, and that is, that is the reason why uh, we we are, we are positive on 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 Kit. Um, on on. Uh, I think I'll probably go through this slide first. Um, I think that on healthcare wise, I think that the recovery in terms of the tourism uh sector continue to show a positive sign. Uh, air passenger traffic volume uh, is improving and on track. I think that last year, um, Malaysia air, airport passenger movement has achieved close to about 80% of the pre-COVID level back in uh, 2019. And, and I think most recently, government has also announced the 30 days uh, visa free entry for the, for the China as well as the Indian tourists uh, from uh, 1st December of last year, uh, which, which is expecting to... Uh, Boost the Malaysian tourism uh, industry, and, and pre COVID, um, China, Hong Kong, India actually make up close to a quarter of the international passenger volume at KIA. So how does that jive with um with the with the healthcare sector? Is that we we are we are expecting the healthcare tourism um 
to pick up momentum. I think that last year, um, um, the healthcare the healthcare uh, travelers was actually up by more than fifty percent, uh, compared to twenty twenty one, um, and 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 as a result of that, uh, revenue as well as uh, your average revenue per traveler, um, actually rebounded very strongly as well. Um, so I think at the end of the day, all these are expecting to drive the higher demand for the healthcare services as well as the bed occupancy rate. Uh, among some of our hospital operators. And um, we all know that uh, government has increased the allocation uh, for the, the MOH um, to 41 billion for this year. Um, and, and, and we do expect that some of our companies within our coverage will actually benefit from it. Um, so we, we actually have a buy on UMedic. Um, Basically, um, UMedic is actually a uh, established uh, distributor of uh, medical accessories as well as consumables. Um, so they actually offer a, a wide range of healthcare equipment. I think that most recently they also manufact start started manufacturing their own products, lah. You know, uh, like your pre uh, pre filled humidifier uh, as well as your inhaler, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And um, I think most most recently, uh, my my colleague um was telling me that. Um, their plant has uh, commenced operation and on track to doubling the uh, production by end of this year. And, and all these are for the export market and, 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 and export market are, are basically um, looking very positive at this uh, point in time uh, due to the increasing health awareness uh, post the pandemic um, era. So, so we do expect um, that's the reason why our FY25 uh, EPS growth is looking uh, strong at about 50%. Um, Optimax, uh, similar thing. Uh, I think I think for uh, for for all of you that uh, there's a Malaysian, I think uh, likely you will see uh, um, uh, pass by Optimax uh, um, um, outlets. I think that I think that um, we are also expecting a a a, a decent 20 30 percent uh, EPS growth uh, for 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 this sector uh, for this company. Um, driven by higher numbers of uh, surgery as well as uh, some of the outlet expansion plan um, which they have. Um, for the oil and gas, um, I think that uh, the oil and gas, um, we are overall expecting uh, the global brand oil price um, to trade in the range of about $85 to $90 per barrel. I think that uh, we will continue to see OPEC very disciplined in terms of their supply cuts. Uh, we are expecting a stronger recovery in terms of the oil demand, as well as um, the boost coming from the SPR replenishment. Um, as you can see here, um, the SPR level, it's uh, only about 20 days of uh, consumption um, at this point in time, well below uh, the 90 days. And the and the US uh is actually uh going to start replenishing the the SPR and 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 providing uh further boost to the to the overall uh oil demand uh, and further supporting the oil prices. So to play this sector, um uh my colleague has has also come up with a report uh, highlighting the beneficiary of the patron's activity outlook. Um, 2024 to 2026. I think that we, we would like to actually highlight a few of the key segments to benefits. Um, you have um, your hookup commissioning, your MCM players, your OSD, uh, your jackup space, your hydraulic workover units, your plug abandonment, uh, your offshore fabrication, as well as your onshore maintenance. I think that um, our, uh, we have three topics. Uh, we have three uh, buy calls in this sector. I think that um, it's not a surprise. Uh, Dayang is actually the largest um, uh, hookah commissioning as well as uh, MCM offshore of, uh, provider in Malaysia. And 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 if you if you look in terms of the man hours, man man hours are expecting to increase by ninety percent this year. So. Naturally, the Dayang earnings as well as um, um, the hookah commissioning MCM outlook is actually directly correlated. 
So with the 90% growth in terms of the outlook, uh, we are expecting a very decent growth in Taiyang earnings as well. Um, Pentech uh, will continue to benefit from a few fronts. Uh, one is on the FDIs. Um, um, I think that uh, PMX has announced close to more than 100 billion uh, ringgit of uh, petrochemical FDI projects. So this will actually drive up the demand for, for the pipe valves and fittings for Pentec. And Pentec is actually the market leader in Malaysia, giving them a dominance uh, advantage. I think that if you look in terms of the, the petroleum activity outlook as well, I think that the offshore, the offshore fabricators are showing a positive sign as well. Uh, so this will actually drive the higher demand for their product uh, as well. Um, so Pentec and Dayang is actually our topic. Uh, actually, we, we recently also initiated our coverage on USMA. Uh, USMA is actually a, 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 a beneficiary of the Petronas Activity Outlook as well. Um, they are the market leader in the plant abandonment uh, space. Uh, and plant abandonment uh, outlook over the next three years is actually looking quite positive as well. Um, I think that over, over next year as well as uh, 2026, I think that the the number of wells uh, to be uh, performed is actually uh, on the increasing trend, and they are also operating. Uh, they are also operator for hydraulic workover unit as well. So, so that's the reason why we have these three company um, as a buy. Okay. Um. And I'll now pass it over to uh Lucas, uh, our tech analyst, uh, to actually bring you guys through the. Oh, look, thank you. Hey, uh, thanks, JY. Good afternoon, everyone. So I'll be presenting about the tech sector and I'd like to share with everyone our findings as well as the rating for our tech sector, which why we believe deserves an overweight rating from us. So basically, uh, we see that the sector has gone through a, quite a tough time last year. And we now to see and we now see the sector to recover in the second half of this year. And our views are very much aligned with uh, market uh, intelligence, such as the World Semiconductor Trade Statistics, or for short, WSDS, even SEMI, and also the International Data Corporation, IDC, and also the Semiconductor Industry Association, which they all point to a recovery between 10 to 20% from the contraction in 2023. So we see the tech sector experiencing a growing demand for new and advanced technologies such as the AI, as well as the uh, smaller NM chips. Uh, right now, the smallest NM chips uh, that the uh, players are currently manufacturing is the 3NM, yeah, just for information purposes. And so, hence, we believe this will drive the demand in the memory segment, uh, according to WSDS, as you know, higher bandwidth memory, or for short, HBM, is required to run and support these processing capabilities of the AI chips. And hence, they forecast this segment to grow about like 40% 40, 40 year on year. And other segments are also poised to be an uptrend and with regions such as US and APAC to be leading the growth. And also we cannot uh, ignore the forecast from SEMI uh, as they as the global semiconductor manufacturing equipment market is also set to rise as tech players continue to spend on new equipment and as well as capacity for these new technologies. Uh, the IDC or International Data Corp is projecting a 20% year end growth for this year. And this is also uh, to be driven by both the US and China, two major players in the semicon industry as well as uh, advanced technologies, new product launches like the iPhone or Samsung, as well as the increased uh, capital expenditure for the foundries. Uh, next slide, please. Right, thanks. So uh, so the sector is will be further backed by the dissipation of inventory levels, which can see from the global PC as much uh, smartphone shipments. Uh, which you can see on the bottom right of the chart. Yeah, you can see like there's improvement uh, for the past two quarters. Uh, and this, says, and this uh, improvement can be supported by comments made by key players like TSMC, which is a Taiwan Semiconductor Manufacturing Corporation uh, from Taiwan. Uh, basically, uh, just for an intro of TSMC, 
they are like a key foundry for major global fabless companies. Uh, they are basically, they do the fabrication of the chips for uh, top tech companies. Yeah, like the Apple, for example. Yeah, and they have expressed uh, optimism for a more robust growth in the coming year. And they also take, and they take into account like the depleting customer inventory levels in the PC, smartphone, and automatic segment. Uh, this is a statement that uh, you can find uh, if you go through their uh, transcript for the third quarter uh, results last year. Yeah. And in the test space, so we have Teradine. So Teradine, Teradine they do like, they're, they're a major uh, global player in the test space. They do testing for these uh, chips. And they anticipate that this year, it will see an incremental improvement uh, year on year uh, due to the uh, broader 3NM technology in the mobility space, as well as the sustained strength, strength in the uh, PC market. Uh, this, and all of this is despite uncertainties uh, related to uh, cheap inventory levels, uh, utilization rates, and economic concerns. And geopolitics-wise, also put Malaysian tech sector in line to what JY said, uh, which I presented regarding the US-China tension team for the EMS segment. And this will put Malaysia in a very favorable position, which will drive like FDI inflow into the region where multinational corporations seek alternative locations and suppliers due to like supply chain diversification as well as US export sanctions against China. And you know, just to give a few examples that what we can see from the recent news and announcement from these top international tech companies. Uh, you can go and Google like uh, companies like Intel, where they are investing uh, USD about six billion over a span of a couple of years in advanced pa packaging fa fabrication in Penang. And there's also another uh, US-based uh, wafer fab equipment manufacturer like Lam Research, which is they announced that they will invest uh, into manu in a manufacturing facility as well as in Penang in one, one billion uh, worth one billion ringgit uh, and as a supply diversification strategy. Uh, other than that, we have Micron, which is a US-based uh, uh, computer memory and data storage producer investing like a billion dollars in a, another facility in Penang and looking forward to uh, for further investments in the coming years. And also not to uh, not mention the another leader in power systems and semiconductor technology such as Infineon to invest like about five billion uh, US dollars in the currently the world largest uh, silicon carbide power fab in Kulin Kerda. So uh, you, with all these expansion plans, uh, we can definitely see like Malaysia's importance in the semiconductor supply chain, especially in the midst of this uh, geopolitic tension. Uh, hence, we advocate investors to start, you know, looking into strong secular trends such as like automotive, uh, data center, medical, and even 5G. Uh, but we do take caution of the anticipated uh, ringgit strength because, uh, because many of these tech companies actually, they do their business in uh, US dollars. So, and US dollars, if you can, uh, if you notice, uh, last year, especially for the last two years, it's been rising really strongly due to the high interest, uh, many interest rate hikes uh, are done by the U.S. Uh, Fed. So, uh, so as we expect a U.S. fund, uh, U.S. Uh, free fund funds rate to reduce in this year, uh, this would strengthen the Malaysian ringgit, which may dampen uh, earnings. Uh. So, but however, uh, we. With the you know with the cheaper borrowings in US, we see investors shipping back into the growth mesa. So our topics for this sector are UWC and Penta Master, which I will be explaining further in the next slide. Next slide, please. Yeah, thanks. So for one of our topics, uh, is UWC. So UWC is a uh, is strategically positioned to benefit from into the move into front end semiconductor market on the back of uh, you know the recovery in uh, global foundry capital spending and we do have a target price for four ringgit and thirty one cents. Uh, just to give a short introduction of what UWC does 
So basically, they they turn uh, you know big metal uh, boxes into like small components uh, for top tech companies, and they will assemble. They will either ship these components to them, or they will help the do assembly into finished parts or you know semi finished parts. Uh, yeah, products for the customers. Yeah, and we do like uh, UWC move into this uh, lucrative front end market that delivers uh, higher margins and earnings for this company. So maybe I'll explain a bit like what is front end to everyone here. So basically front end uh, of the semiconductor manufacturing industry refers to like the initial stages of creating computer chips or like ICs uh, or integrated circuits. So uh, this is where like the raw materials uh, usually we uh, usually is uh, silicon wafers undergo like a series of processes to form the basic structures of the chips, which will then be uh, implanted into electronic devices like your phones, your laptops, yeah, even your EV cars. So you can think of it as like uh, laying the foundation and construction of, of the framework of the building. Yeah. So it's a very important part of the semiconductor uh, chain. And this front end, right? Uh, market is like six to seven times larger than their usual back end market that the Malaysia uh, tech uh, companies they are usually serving, uh, which makes it more lucrative. Yeah. So uh, UWC is moving to serve these customers in the front end semiconductor market. And you can do a Google search. Uh, you can also roughly gauge like how many front end semiconductor markets are there in the world. And you can see that there isn't many. Uh. So you, other than that, US, and this will also shows that UWC to benefit from the supply chain diversification out of China. As uh, there are also like many restrictions where uh, US uh, you know, stopping China from you know, getting their hands on into uh, front end advanced technology equipment uh, so that they won't catch up to them. Yeah. And yeah, next slide, please. But can we have the next slide? Yeah, thanks. So uh, for our next uh, our next uh, recommendation will be uh, Penta Master as they are set to capitalize on the emerging demand for SIC or so we call silicon carbon and automation solutions, which will be supported by the overall EV demand trend. And we have a target price of 565 cents for this company. So what does uh, another short introduction of what Penta Master does is that they produce like automation equipment for the semicon and uh, EV players and they, they do like testers. So what these testers do, so testers are usually what uh, the uh, Malaysia Semiconductor uh, is, uh, is well known for, uh, which is also known as the back end segment. So basically they will test like these chips at either the wafer level or at the package level before they go into the assembly of the uh, final products of these electronic devices. So basically, they they will need to test this uh, electronics so to make sure they're in uh, within on within the uh, requirements of the of the specification of this technology. Uh, and where where whether they will you know be uh, go through the uh, requirements uh, basically. And what we like about Penta Master is their specialization in IGBT and SIC uh, assembly and test solutions. Uh, don't worry, I'll explain a little bit of what this uh, IGBT and SIC is all about. So IGBT is basically an, a very important electronic component that is uh, widely used in many applications, but they are most uh, uh, widely known for the usage in power electronics. Yeah, so basically your power uh, power basically is like energy, la, yeah, electrical energy. And but and they are widely used in uh, many in many industries, such as uh, EV, solar, and even home appliances. And SIC, which is a uh, silicon carbide, is a material blend of uh, silicon and carbide. And usually this uh these chips, right, they are usually uh they are using the traditional silicon material, and SIC is a blend of both of them, and that's used in power devices. Uh, Yep. And uh, yeah, basically, as I see, it's a superior version of the silicon. Lab. And the, advantage, the advantages of this is uh, the SIC technology is becoming uh, more, 
more notable in high voltages that's required for EV batteries. So they are, we anticipate that this silicon carbide will dominate the production of future EVs. So right now the SIC technology is right in the really infant stage and they will dominate the future of EV ba uh, batteries, which will drive uh, Penta Master's growth. And Penta Master, uh, most of their customers are from China. Yeah, and you can also do a quick Google search on how the EV market in China is doing. Yeah. yeah. And other than that, they're also venturing into the medical business, you know, expanding manufacturing, manufacturing facilities, you know, providing automation capabilities to the medical devices market. And hence, uh, last 